Just before we begin, I'd like to mention that I put a handout on the website about forming the faithful for ministry. Well, thank you everyone for joining us on the last Sunday of the church's year, the, the Feast of Christ the Universal King. So we've had a long journey, 52 Sundays that we've gathered with you and you with us as we've reflected on the Word of God. And we bring it all to a conclusion today with a challenging reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food, I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. I need to say again that this is part of the eschatological discourse and I've been saying that there were four parables, um, three saying be prepared and this one is really about what it means to be prepared. But in a sense it's not a parable, it's more like a, a heavenly vision. It's like what we have in the book of Revelation, uh, looking into the throne room as it were, where the final things are happening. And what we have here is not a judgment, it's a sentencing. In other words, the people are already judged by the actions that they've done, um, but really what's being pronounced here is the outcome of what they um, um, have done. Well, in a sense, not what they have done, because it's what they did not do that is the thing. It's not as if something positive they didn't do. They didn't welcome Jesus. And I think the point is not so much about the acts of, um, of mercy. I mean, they're, they're the norm, there's no doubt about that. But it, it's meeting Jesus in those acts that is the thing that is um, um, mentioned. So really, the, we've got to be prepared. What does it mean to be prepared? It really is recognising Jesus when he comes to us in disguise, in the disguise of these people. This looks like an easy text, but I, I found that there's really quite a significant division among authors about this text. And it, it figures round the, the word nations, and also the least, the very least. Um, 
the traditional understanding is that the nations means everybody and Jesus identifies with the least and that means that, um, he identifies with those who are like the acts of mercy, those the poor and that means that when we well, not only we but anybody who is reaching out yeah. to these actually um, are, are meeting Jesus in those events but there's another way of looking at it where the word nations is meant to see be seen um, more as those who are not Christian uh, it's a term that's used about the Gentiles in the Old Testament and Jesus identity with the least is um, taken to mean Jesus' identity with the little ones, as we have in the Gospel, which are basically those who have responded to him. And therefore, the, the way that is understood is that, um, that really it's the way people respond to, to the believers that is the thing that is there. And that's, that's an alternative opinion. One of the things I liked about that opinion was that really I, I believe very strongly that Jesus is present in the believer and that the believer does bring Jesus to the world. Um, but that's not to be identified just with what is here, but I think that's part of our faith. But I, I think the more traditional one, as, as I've mentioned, is the fact that um, all mankind, as they reach out in these acts of mercy, are actually um, meeting Jesus. And there's a reference to Jesus as the king I wanted to mention because he's identified as a king in the infancy narratives, but the passion is about to begin at the end of this particular thing. The passion is the very next thing. And uh, Jesus as king plays a significant role um, in the passion. So it sort of brings to the end the act of ministry of Jesus mm. and then the passion begins. So it's quite a significant um, moment um, in the Gospel. I remember hearing or reading at some stage that we're all given an examination at the end of life, but we're given the three questions that will be examined on before we get there. One is, who am I? Who is God? And what am I going to do about it? And the Gospel on this last Sunday of the year uh, really brought that home to me that this is a way to sum up what I say I'm living for and my living is seen in my doing and uh, it shows me up in a way as to my faithfulness to who I believe God is and who I am in the light of who this God is. What struck me this time and I don't know why I've never never heard it before I'm a bit slower than most I think at the end of this gospel we hear those questions repeated not once not twice not three times but four times and what struck me was how important those questions must be for the construction invariably the parable has a story beginning middle and end this doesn't it's a discourse one between the other between the other but when was i this when was i that this when was i that? so it just made me very aware of the importance of these actions and i suppose what i noticed is we live in a te technologically highly developed world but all of these require us to be physically present to do the things, to visit the sick, not to yeah. go online, and not, you know, to go to the prison, mm. to clothe, to feed, that the, all requires me to be there in mm. person, to show up. I suppose that's what I noticed mm. on that first reading. Well, you have listened as we, David, Virginia and I, have shared with you our thoughts. We invite you to take some time to not just to sit today with the word but to wrestle with it because I think there is a certain wrestling that it does invite us to engage in with that word and to see how you respond to what you read, to what you reflect upon in the, the gospel of today. Okay. Well, welcome back. and. Uh, as we come back from our own reflection, 
Let's listen to the reading again with new ears and a, a new presence that we give to the word we hear. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep and the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you as a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked, or sick and in prison, and didn't take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. I couldn't help but think, Virginia, when you used the word show up, that I, that confronted me just recently, a, uh, a spiritual writer who said that what we have to do is to show up so God can show off. Mm. And I, that, that's really touched me. And I thought, now, this is a beautiful way at the end of the year to really let God show off by uh, reminding us of the ways in which God is able to show off through us in our faithfulness to responding to his word. So the word becomes for me then an awareness examine over the course of this week of the ways in which I live my life by showing up to God so that God can show off. In a strange way, John, um, it's a follow-on for me in terms of showing up. Sometimes I let the temptation of busyness, my busyness, to get in the way. So it's easy to find a, an excuse, you know, to say, to visit someone, to make the effort, to go out to dinner, just to be present. I think, oh, I'll just do the washing, I'll just do the, put the thing, I'll just do the... So in a way, my own busyness is a temptation to finding the time to show up. Yes, I was struck by the fact that Jesus comes to us in disguise. Yeah. And I, I thought I made a resolution that I'd look around and see if there's anybody in whom I have not recognised the presence of Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Virginia and David. Again, you come to appreciate how rich the Word of God is and each of us comes out of the listening to the Word of God with new challenges and new insights. So having listened to the three of us, take a moment now yourselves and what is it that comes out of the Word for you that you want to take into the week ahead? And as someone once said, we begin well, let's finish well, well let's finish the church's year well on a high note by again reaffirming the way in which God is able to act in and through us.
To be faithful to what God has asked of us, we can't do it alone. We, we need that constant reminder and prodding of God, of the Holy Spirit, to keep us up to the mark. So let's take a moment just to pray that that Spirit of God will certainly be at work in us through the course of the coming week. Well, we thank you for the journey of 52 weeks of this church year, and we bring year A to a closure with this Feast of Christ the King, and begin in the following week, to which we invite you to rejoin us, when we begin year B and essentially with the Gospel of, of Mark. But for now, let's conclude our time together in this year of the church with the closing prayer, or the opening prayer of the liturgy, of this final Sunday on the Feast of Christ the King. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty's service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through Christ our Lord. <laughs> 